This topic lecture covers how muscles contract. Here are the topic objectives for this topic. In this lecture, we are going to cover the basics of muscle contractions. There are three main types of muscle found in the body. The skeletal muscle is the tissue that we think about most often, as this is the tissue that allows us to perform voluntary motions, such as taking notes or running. Cardiac muscle is a specialized muscle in our hearts that keeps this organ pumping and pushing blood throughout our bodies. Lastly, we have smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is responsible for involuntary movements within the body. While all three of these muscle types have their own unique traits, they all use similar cell functions to contract. Throughout this topic lecture, we are going to focus on skeletal muscle, but remember this applies to all types of muscle. Let's take a closer look at the composition of skeletal muscle cells. These don't match the traditional cell we focus on when we talk about cell structure. Instead, a single muscle cell is the result of the fusion of many smaller cells, resulting in a multinucleated supercell. Within the cytoplasm of the cell, a majority of the cell is composed of myofibrils. These myofibrils contain the fibers that allow for muscle contract contraction and can run the entire length of the cell. These myofibrils consist of chains of sarcomeres. It, it is this repeating pattern that gives muscle tissue a striated look. The sarcomeres consist of actin and myosin filaments. Muscles have two main fiber components, actin and myosin. The myosin filament is actually a dimer composed of two myosin-2 molecules. This dimer is formed with two globular heads on each end of the myosin filament. The tails of each of these myosin-2 molecules come together to form a coiled coil in the center. This myosin filament serves as a buffer between two actin molecules. This buffer allows for the opposite oriented actin molecules to slide past each other creating a contractile force. Don't forget that while this contractile force is generally thought of as only occurring in muscle cells, it can also occur in contractile bundles and rings in non-muscle cells. These bundles and rings aid in cell division. On this slide, you can see how actin and myosin come together to form a sarcomere. The myosin filaments are separating the oppositely charged actin molecules. Make sure you notice how thick the myosin filaments are. There are about 300 myosin heads that attach to various places on the actin, allowing for rapid movement. The actin filaments are anchored to the Z-disc by their positive end. The contraction is the result of the actin molecules sliding over the myosin filaments, which results in the shortening of the sarcomere. When all the sarcomeres in a muscle move simultaneously, the result is a muscle contraction across the entire muscle. What exactly causes this sliding motion to occur? There are five steps to this process, but in brief, the globular heads of the myosin filaments essentially push the actin filament towards the center of the sarcomere. Now, it's not quite that simple, so let's walk through each of these steps. To start the process, the myosin head, remember that there are 300 on each of the myosin filament doing this, attach to the actin filament in a tight association. When ATP is introduced, it will bind to an active site on the myosin head. This causes a conformational change that releases the actin from the myosin head. After releasing the actin filament, the myosin head moves where its head is located about 5 nanometers and hydrolysizes the ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate. Note, the ATP is not released at this point. While the myosin head released the actin molecule when it is bound to the, to the ATP, there is still a weak attraction to the actin. At this point, myosin reattaches to a new section of the actin molecule. This causes the power stroke to occur. This power stroke happens when ADP is released from the myosin head, which causes it to spring back to its original position, which moves the actin fiber and brings the process back to the beginning. And here we are at the start of the action again. Remember 
that at this point the actin fiber has moved about 5 nanometers towards the center of the sarcomere. When this is combined and repeated, the muscle tissue contracts. So what starts this molecular interaction? It all comes from signals in the nerves. The nerve terminal triggers a change in the action potential of the muscle cell. This creates an electrical signal that travels through a special structure in the muscle cell known as the T-tubules. When this signal reaches the sarco sarcoplasmic reticulum, the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium into the cytosol, which then can serve as a secondary messenger for additional cell action. In this case, it stimulates muscle contraction through a molecular switch. As calcium is released into the cytosol, it will bind to a molecule known as troporin. This molecule sits on the actin filament in association with the second protein known as topomyosin. Together these proteins form a molecular switch that prevents myosin from attaching to actin. When calcium is released, it will bind to the tropoin protein, creating a conformational shift, which then causes a shift in the tropomyosin. This shift creates a space on the actin filament for the myosin heads to bind to the actin, allowing it to create the contraction action we reviewed earlier. It is important to remember that while we talked through skeletal muscle contractions, that the main action of contractions are similar. Smooth muscle and non-smooth muscle cells use a specialized method of activation to stimulate contraction that is different from the molecular structures we just discussed. I'm not worried about you understanding this secondary mechanism. Instead, recognize that there is an evolution in the process of contractions and that muscle contraction on its own is an example of a highly specialized function of the cytoskeleton. This is the end of this lecture. Do let me know if you would like to discuss any of the topics from this chapter in more detail.